What's up you guys, Shortimus Prime here doing another Diamond Select Toys Action Figure Review Set on the Gotham TV Series 2, Detective Harvey Bullock, Alfred Pennyworth, and Edward Nigma. If you're trying to pick these up, you can pre-order them now at Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And big thanks to Diamond Select Toys for making this review possible. If you want to see the latest from them, go ahead and check the link below to their YouTube channel. Anyway, looking at the packaging, it's pretty standard select packaging over here. Here. On the side, you can see we get Harvey Bullock over there, and then we get Pennyworth, and then there's Nigma, and then on the back, you can see the figure amongst the other figures from the wave right over there. And then here's a read up on Edward Nigma. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it now, and then the read up on Pennyworth. If you want to read it, pause it now, and then the read up on Harvey Bullock. We'll read it, pause it now. All right, let's get to it and crack these things open. And here are the three figures out of the packaging. Now, each of these come with their own respective dioramas, which I'll show off in just a minute. But just talking about the figures themselves really quick, I really really like them a lot. I think the face sculpts resemble the actors from the show, and I really think the articulation on these is really good. I do recommend heating them up though, some of the joints are pretty stiff. But anyway, my only complaint about this whole set is Bullock's feet, that's my only real gripe with these. But other than that, I really like them a lot. So looking at Edward Nigma, here he is with his desk. This is his one accessory, or his Dio accessory anyway, and he also comes with his question mark coffee cup, of course he is the Riddler in the future, and right now he works for the police department, so I think that's kind of a trip. But anyway, looking at this desk, I think this is really cool, man. Very, very nice looking desk. I really like this really bright silver paint that they used over here. So realistic looking. I wish the drawers would open, but they do not. Uh, it does not come with a chair. I feel like a chair would be appropriate, but still, for dioramas and stuff like that, this is perfect for ACBA. And then looking at Edward Nima himself, well, you have his coffee cup. I want to get a close shot of that, which looks pretty nice. You know, you get the question mark over there. You can see he's got some coffee inside, so he takes no cream, no sugar, or anything. And then looking at the head sculpt, I actually really think this resembles the actor very well. I do I do think the actor's face is just a little bit longer, but the expression over here, that stuck up smirk, I just think is very well done on this. And I like the flesh tone, I think the glasses came out looking really good too. I haven't tried really removing them, I know if I heated it up or if I really wanted to push it I could probably take the glasses off. But they seem like they're pretty firmly stuck on there so I don't really want to mess with it too much, plus I just think it looks better like this anyway. Kind of has a Peter Parker kind of look to it, I don't know, I feel like you could double this as a Peter Parker figure. Look on the side over there, the hair looks pretty good. There isn't really too much paint on this figure, or any of the figures for that matter, as far as detailing goes and shadowing effects. But as far as all the deco comes out, it looks really nice right over here. You know, he has his pens in there. Then this part of his lab coat right here is made out of a soft material, so you can still articulate the ab joint in there and everything. And looking, I could take this off if I really want to. You know, it kind of stays on there pretty nicely once you weave it through the fingers. And looking at his pants over here, you know, it's just a solid brown, got some nice wrinkles, and nice looking shoes right over there, and he has peg holes at the bottom of his feet. And as far as articulation goes, you can move the head up a little bit on this figure, so I don't think that's too bad. He can eh, look down just a little bit as well. You get side to side motion over here, and you do get neck pivot. The shoulders can move outward all the way, and you can move them forward. He does have an elbow bend at 90 degrees, and it rotates side to side. Both wrists have a swivel, and they have a hinge that moves up and down. He does have an ab crunch underneath the coat right there as you can see and it does move back some and you can rotate so it's got to have a diaphragm joint underneath there he also has a waist joint so that allows motion to be moved like that and he has leg joints that move all the way out yeah he's got the DCUC gaping crotch pits can't kick forward that much and moves back only a little bit upper thigh swivel double jointed knees so you can really get him into some dynamic poses and then he has ankles that move down they don't really move up so much you get side to side rotation plus ankle pivot. Then here's a look at Alfred Pennyworth. I kept on calling him Pennyworth at the beginning of this video, I think from reading too much Batman and Robin. Damian Wayne's the one who always calls him Pennyworth. Everyone else just calls him Alfred. But anyway, looking at this base, the fireplace looks really good. I'm really liking this a lot. I guess one little gripe of mine is that I wish we had sculpted lines for the wood, but we do get paint that makes it look like it's wood, as you can see right over there. But I think the sculpt is really good on this. I really like this portion of the fireplace. It looks really nice. So yeah, very nice diorama. I dig it. You know, and then in the back of it, it is just hollow, but not to worry, I think it looks pretty good just like that. You could use this for all kinds of stuff, man. It doesn't have to be Gotham figures. But then looking at the Alfred, for the most part, I think this head sculpt really resembles the actor. I do think the forehead is maybe just a little bit too big, though, but aside from that, I think it looks like him. It looks pretty good. Paint apps came out pretty clean. 
Looking at the hair over here, nice variety of colors, I think it looks pretty nice. And then the rest of the figure is just mostly black, you get his black tie, and then you get this little gold chain thing right over here that he wears, which looks really nice, and you got his hanky, very nice wrinkles sculpted in here, nice flesh tone, you get that ring right over there on the pinky, uh, no ring on this side, over here, and nice wrinkles in the pants and everything, you get that seam going down the leg. His loafers look really nice too, very nice looking shoes. Yeah, nice glossy black paint for those, I like that. He does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. And here's a quick look at the back of the figure. Now as far as articulation goes, he can look up quite a bit, I like that. And he can move his head down some, that much. You get side to side movement, you get some head pivot, not too much though. His shoulders move outward pretty far. I can't move them inward more than that, I wish I could move them down more so. Uh, you can't move them forward. He does have an elbow bend that doesn't really quite meet the 90 degree mark. He can rotate side to side at the elbow, his wrist moves side to side. He does have a hinge that moves up and down. He has a diaphragm joint that turns side to side. He can crunch forward some and move back a little bit and I like that the jacket is made out of this soft pliable material. He has a DCUC gaping crotch bits and he can kick forward, can kick back, he has a thigh cut swivel, doublet jointed knees, ankles move down, they do move up, he has side to side rotation at the ankle and he does have ankle pivot. And then he's looking at Detective Harvey Bullock. This is actually one of my favorite characters from the show, I really like this Bullock character. The figure is really good and he has this really cool base over here which I really like. And if you have the series 1 Gotham figures, you can take the Selena Kyle and Jim Gordon bases and you know, kind of get something going on, even though it doesn't really match. Would have been nice if they did, but still looks pretty good. Looks like we get a puddle of oil right over there. Nice glossy black paint, some nice cracks and paint apps throughout here, especially on the brick too. I'm really digging that. And then his one accessory is his revolver, which is a nice looking revolver. I like that. Fits into his hand very nicely. And then the left hand has a trigger finger as well, so you can squeeze that in there. It doesn't fit in as easily though, so I'm just going to leave it in the right hand for the most part. And you're just looking at the head sculpt, which I really like. That's pretty dead on. I don't know. I think that looks just like him from the show. Let's like darken this up. You can see some of the wrinkles and everything. I like how the beard came out. The flesh tone looks really good. The hair looks pretty nice. Was this hair a little bit longer? I can't remember. I think the hair may be a little bit longer than that. Looking at the fedora over here, it's made out of nice squishy material and you just plop that right there. So looks even better like that. Yeah, if you're a fan of the animated series, I think you'll really like this Bullock. I don't know, it just really matches with what I remember Bullock being like from the Batman animated series. This is like a younger version of that Bullock in my mind anyway. But looking at his trench coat, you get some really nice wrinkles over here. Nice looking tie. And his shirt looks pretty good. And you know, all the buttons sculpted on there. Nice wrinkles throughout. And it doesn't really have too much of a gut or anything. I guess not yet. It's a younger Bullock. Nice silver pants on the buckle right there. Like I said earlier, you may want to heat up these joints before you really start messing with them. And they didn't really paint the flesh tone in all the way over there. Same thing with this side over here too, but other than that, the hands look pretty good. Then looking at the pants over here, we get some nice wrinkles once again. And then his shoes look really nice. They're very, very realistic looking shoes. The only problem is, is that they slope upwards and it makes it trickier for the figure to stand. I don't like that. I wish these were a little bit flatter at the bottom. And he does have the peg holes under his feet, so you can get him on a stand that has the peg sticking out. And he's looking at the back of the figure. Again, some really nice realistic wrinkles on his coat. I like it. Now as far as the articulation goes, you can get his head to move up only that much. So not a whole lot of looking up movement. He does look down very far though. His head does turn side to side and you do get a great amount of neck pivot over there. His shoulders move outward very far and you can get him to move forward. He does bend at the elbow but not quite 90 degrees and he rotates at the elbow, rotates at the wrist, hinges forward and back or up and down. He does have a diaphragm joint in here and you can rotate that side to side and it doesn't really move forward and back so much and this coat is actually made out of a stiffer material than the coat that we'd gotten on Alfred and the coat that we'd gotten on Enigma too. Uh, he does have a waist swivel though so that helps. He does have these hip joints that move outward which have gotten kind of loose early on especially this, this left leg right here. It is a bit on the loose side. Can not really kick back so much. Moves outward very far. You get an upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees, then his ankles move down. They don't really move up so much. He has side to side movement and he does have ankle pivot. So to measure these figures out, they are 7 inch scale figures. You can see Edward standing just a little over 7 inches and Bullock and Alfred are both standing well over 7 inches. Then here's the series 1 Gotham figures compared to the series 2 Gotham figures right over here. Unfortunately I cannot get Gordon's legs to move more inward so it's kind of difficult to see how well he stands next to Bullock. 
And then here's the new Gotham figures next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Hey, riddle me this. What wears an ugly gray coat, has terrible brown slacks, terrible looking glasses, a stupid smirk on his face, and loves uppercuts? Give up? Sure, you can! And then here's some display options with the figures once again. I think this is a very solid set. I really think Diamond's killing it with these dios. I think they're very well made. And I don't know, I just have Riddler on his knees over there, making it look like he's sitting behind there. Ah, I think it looks alright. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button. Click any of these boxes over here if you want more shart in your face. If you want to help support this YouTube channel, please go ahead and check out the Patreon account. If you want to see channel updates, go ahead and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to go to ToyNewsEye.com for a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll Catch you guys later. Peace. Posing action figures, posing action figures, posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures. That's crispy. And then there's a read up on Edward Nimba. Then there's a read up on Edward. Then there's a read up on. Then there's a read. Then here's a read up on Edward Nimba. Then here's a read up on Edward Nimba. <laughs> Then here's a <laughs> shit. Then here's a read up on Edward Nim. Then here's a then here's a read up on Edward Nim. Then here's a.